welcome everyone. Today we eventually are going to start implementation our custom Redis using .NET Core. Basically, first of all, we need some kind of background prior of live coding and implementation. What is Remote Dictionary Server is kind of simple dictionary data structure which allows you reliability, partitioning, horizontal scaling, in some cases durability, and I'm not sure, but probably Redis also allows you to use transactions, but I'm not sure. Basically, why should you use Redis instead of some kind of simple dictionary data structure? Because of computational and memory capacity. Basically, it's trade-off between vertical and horizontal scaling. Your vertical scaling is bounded by, first of all, your budget, budget of your project, and um, also it is bounded by by our computational and memory bound in the single machine. At some point of time you will end up with decisions that you should start vertical partitioning because your single machine cannot provide your performance requirements anymore. Therefore there is the place and the time when you can decide start using the remote dictionary server. And first of all, we need some kind of plan what we are going to implement here. Basically, I want to implement, I've already done that in my repository, but in our case we will implement this Redis without durability and probably without transactions. I will implement partitioning and replication. Replication for availability and partitioning for horizontal scaling. Okay, and first of all, let's figure out the partitioning method we will use. Basically, uh, what the partition is. The partition is a method of splitting your data between different servers and different machines. Okay, we also can call it like horizontal scaling when we split our data between a lot of servers and using all the memory and computational powers. And basically, for sure, we need our request router. In our case, it will be also some kind of .NET Core service. His responsibility is to route our particular key value to particular partitioning. And there are the two main tactics for partitioning. First of all, we can partition by K range. According to Designing Data Intensive Applications book, for sure a lot of information I got from there, partitioning by K range is some kind of splitting your K on ranges and um, mark each partition which particular range. For example, we can mark first partition with this range, second partition with this range, and third partition with this range. And our router will decide where to throw our K value P by particular key. If this key is in range of first partition, it will throw it to first partition. In case it is from 1 till 30, it will throw will data to first partition. In case our key is between 31 and 60 range, it will put it in the second partition and so on. But what the problem with this type of partitioning? Actually, the problem is called hotspot. Suppose the pattern of our inserting to the cache is some kind of for loop pattern. For example, we got cycle 4 from first index till 90 index and we just add to our partitions all of those keys. And for sure, first of all, we will add all values to the first partition because the first keys will be from first index to 30 index and two other partitions will do nothing in that case and also if we start querying this partitioning it will handle a lot of load because we query and we insert the data here and this is bad because we don't use other partitions by that time. What is the solution for that problem? The solution is the second type of partitioning, is a partitioning by cache of key. Actually, instead of key range, we can mark each partition with hash range, and since one of the property of our hash function is 
to be uniformly distributed. This is the probability, the hash, to go to a particular bucket. And if it is uniformly distributed, for simplicity we can name it like randomly distributed between all partitionings, we will not end up with hot spots, because in case of first index we got just random hash 103, for second we can end up with pretty random like 5 index or something like that. And our data will be randomly distributed between all the, the partitionings. And it will protect us from the hotspots. But it brings us another problem which is called rebalancing. In some point of time all of your partitionings will be highly loaded and um, you cannot add new data anymore because it will not profit you in horizontal scaling and you should add another instances of partitions and um, in that case you need to implement some kind of mechanism how you can just split your partition data and to sync a little data from each of partition to newly added partition for example this partition will be now marked with from 1 to 20 and uh, the particular range from 20 to 30 will go to this force partitioning. And the same we will do with those partitionings. Actually, I have not implemented rebalancing yet, but I think in the worst case we can use just compile time partitioning because since we don't want to some kind of durability, it's not a problem just to just to get down your partitioning system and set up with additional partitions next time. Okay, and uh, another case how we can do replication is pretty simple. In my case uh, I will use master-slave replication in which all insertions of data can go only to master and uh, the reads can be done on all kind of instances. But you cannot add your data to slaves. Uh, in my case probably uh, I will use a synchronous replication because it is much more faster than synchronous uh, replication and that's all probably. Now after this background probably what I can do I just set up my project structure and that's all. For this I'll create a new project. In my architecture we need actual three kind of projects. First project will be our master, it's in .NET Core API. Also we should add children project which will represent all our children. For sure we need some kind of common library which we can use from both of our child and master project. That's probably all. Also in the real project we need a test project in order to implement our functional integration and unit tests. But since I've already implemented in my repo and uh, I had uh, all of those tests, I don't need to test it because I've already done it. Probably in the final in the final part, we will implement some kind of load tests, integration tests in order to test our setup system with two or three partitions and uh, one master for sure. Also maybe we will implement integration tests for testing replication with eventual consistency and probably I think that's enough for today I'll I gave you some kind of background knowledge and in the next part we can start implementing it also note uh, currently I'm using new microphone please leave a comment below whether it sounds 
better or worse than previous one. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my social media like Instagram, Telegram, Facebook, etc. And thank you for your attention. Goodbye.